of people, which is really weird because some people pick up on this thing and it's like, boom, they're, they're caught up on it. They're ready. They're ready to go. Some of us, is, it's going to take a lot longer to be able to understand it and be able to get it. So, today, title it. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Title it. Is that good right there? Factoring AX squared plus BX plus C when A equals 1. Alright, I'm going to write down a couple symbols, and this isn't going to make any sense to you right now, but as we do a few problems, when we come back to it, this is going to make a lot of sense. So, what you're going to see is something that looks like this. Okay, um, so today we're going to be factoring AX squared plus BX plus C, but it's going to be where A equals 1. So as you guys can see here in this example, there's nothing in front of the X squared, right? And it's always going to be in this form right here, X squared, X constant. Okay, the constant's a number that doesn't have a variable attached to it. So X squared, X, and then constant. Now, today we're going to be factoring it where A equals 1. And all we're, we're not going to have any numbers in front of X squared today. Coming up here at the end of this week, we'll have it where A is not 1, and A is 10, and 9, and 6, and negative 4, and stuff like that. So, but as of, as of right now, A equals 1. Now, the biggest things you guys can see, this is how your answer is going to end up looking. What, are the, what does that look like right here? What, have we, what kind of problems have we done that looks like these? Foil, right? So those are our foil parentheses, what they're called. They're our binomial or our foil parentheses. If we look here, we have x plus m and x plus p. Now m and p are just numbers. We're going to find those numbers, m and p. The biggest things we have to know is that m plus p equals b, which is right here, and m times p equals c, which is right here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to find two numbers that multiplies together to be C and the same two numbers add together to be B. So here we go. I'm going to write down a few examples. You write them down inside your journal. X squared plus 9X plus 20. <coughs> the first thing is I like to identify what my A, my B, and my C are. So A is right here. What is A in this problem? 1, right? A is always going to be 1 today. What's B? Nine. B is 9. What's C? 20. Okay, so I always like to label on them. You don't have to. You get to the point where you don't have to. Early on, it might be a good idea to label them just so you know which, which is which. And then this is what we're going to do. I'm going to write out some steps on the first problem, and then we'll go through a bunch quickly. Number one, step number one. Write C off to the side with a line. So we're going to write C off to the side with a line like that. Step two, in 
and I'll explain what I mean here. In the testing area, find two numbers that multiply to BC and add to B B. So you're multiplying it to be C and add it to be B. So five and four. Holy crap. Okay. This is called the testing area over here. Does everyone see the, the line next to the 20? This is called the testing area. This is where you're going to think of all the numbers that multiply together to be 20. So, Kason, tell, tell me two numbers that multiply together to be 20. 20 and 1, good job. Do those multiply together to be 20? Yep, but do they add together to be 9? No. Tell me another one, 10 and 2, good job, Kason. Do those add together to be 9? Nope. Trey, give me another. 5 and 4, you're welcome. Okay, so 5 and 4, do those two numbers multiply together to be 20? Do they add together to be 9? Yeah. Yes, if they do, I circle them right here. Now that's not your answer, but that tells me which two numbers I'm going to use. Step number 3. Make FOIL parentheses with variable in front and numbers plugged in. So make four parentheses with variable in front and numbers plugged in. So they're going to look like that at the very first. Now it's very key to identify is four and five positive or negative? They're both positive, so they're both going to be positive down there, and there's your answer. Does it get harder? No. Yes. Man. We'll do some easy ones, though, so we make sure we get those, okay? All right, now look, a lot of you guys are going to see this. This is called the eternal loop. I don't want you to get there. When you're factoring, this is where you're getting down to. Now, some of you guys are going to get to here, and you're going to say, what do you think you're going to say right here? Who in here wanted to foil that now? You guys will get, you know, oh, I need to foil that. Well, the problem is when you foil it, you're going to go right back to that answer. And then you're going to be like, oh, now I factor. And you're going to go right back down to here. And then I've, I've literally seen students do this like 10 times where they factor, then they foil. Then they factor, then they foil. And then there is an adventure equation I can't get out. What the heck's going on? Something's really wrong. They keep on doing the exact same crap over and over again. And I say, well, your answer is right there. And then they get really angry. Okay, let's do another. Let's just stay with X's. X squared plus 11X plus 24. I'm not going to write out the steps, I'm just going to go through them. First thing is, we're going to write C off to the side with a line. Then we're going to start testing numbers that multiply together to be C and add together to be B. So Lane, tell me two numbers that multiply together to be 24. Okay, do those add together to be 11? Nope. Juliana? 8 and 3. Do those add together to be 11? Yep. Now look, what about if she couldn't get it? Could you go through every number that multiply together to be 24? Yeah, until you get it. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to come over here, you're going to go x plus 8 and x plus 3, and there's your answer. Because they're both positive, they're both positive right there. Okay, I'm going to have you guys count on your own. We're going to do them. We got a lot to get through today. Here's one on your own. So now we're going to go T's. Does it change it? No. This one's a little bit tricky, but you should be able to do it. Yep. It's here. It's still here. It's just right here. Because x times x is x squared. Yep. We're just simplifying the problem or factoring it. Say, do you think you got it? Say, do you want a shot at the title? Of course you do. What? Are, all right. See, see, see. Oh, you bring it in to C. Went from Sydney to Sid to C. Okay. Said, what are two numbers that multiply together to be nine and add together to be ten? Oh, is she right? Yes, she is. Those two numbers multiply together to be nine. And they add together to be 10. So they're both positive. So we're going to put them into our fluid parentheses right there. And there's your answer. Who got it right? Raise your hand. Not bad. Not bad. Trey didn't even do it. All right, here we go. Let's get a little bit harder. Before I go on, do you guys want to hear the email I just really saw? Listen to this email. Hey, my phone kept buzzing. I just received a call from Celeste Myers on City Council about the school board meeting tomorrow. Somehow the Southwest Department of Health guy was presented with a plan that he has approved and the board is discussing it tomorrow about kids not having to wear masks at school. She said most of the school board agrees masks are at school are not needed and control should be turned over to local authority. She was asking we pass along the info so lots of parents can be at the meeting to voice their concerns in a polite way. I guess comments will be made to open to the public right at 7. Pass the word and let's get a lot there. So if we put this mask thing in the past. So if you want to tell your parents, um, I think it's today. No, it hasn't been approved by our school board. So, so hey, so tell your parents if they wanted to go to the school board meeting voice their concerns because I can tell you right now I kind of would like to not have to wear them. Here we go. My, my parents would have told me as a kid you do. My parents probably would have forced me to wear it even if they didn't believe it. Oh you don't like to? Guess what? Now you're going to have to wear two. <coughs> well played. Okay here we go. Now we're going to start playing in the world of negatives and this is where it starts to get a lot harder. Is when you have to start worrying about negatives. Okay. Now the process stays the same. Here we go. We're going to write C out here to the side. Now pay attention. C is positive still, right? So we're going to write C off to the side. It's still positive, but now this is different. Now we need two numbers that multiply together to be 12 and add together to be negative 8. So we need two numbers that multiply together to be 12 and add together to be negative 8. Preston, you already think you got it? Bingo. Now look, he just barely drilled it, but we're going to show you kind of the thought process I go through to be able to get to it. I do it the exact same way. I go 12 and 1. Is there any way that 12 and 1 can get to 8? Any way, shape, or form? Can you subtract them? Can you add them? Any way they get to 8? No. And then I went, okay, 4 and 3. Is there any way that 4 and 3 can get to 8? 
no, there, I mean, 7, 1, negative 1, right? There's no way those are going to get to 8. So then I look at 6 and 2. Okay, is there a way that 6 and 2 can get to 8? Yeah, they get to 8. Okay, let's see if we can make them positive or negative to be able to get there. Well, I know it has to multiply together to be a positive 12. So they either both have to be positive or both have to be negative. Because if only if one of these was negative, C would have to be negative. Right? Because a positive times a negative is a negative. So they both either have to be negative or they both have to be positive. Now, if they're both positive, that makes it positive 8. If they're both negative, that makes a negative 8. Negative 6 combined with a negative 2 gives me negative 8. Negative 6 times a negative 2 gives me a positive 12. So we're going to come over here to our four parentheses after we got our two numbers. And now we plug them in. Now they're both negative. So we punch them in like that. All right. Question so far. All right. I'm going to write one down. When you guys think you get to the numbers, I want you to raise your hand. Okay. When you guys get to the two numbers, when you think you got this, I want you to raise your hand when you get the two numbers. You don't need to write it. Only you can use the testnary, but when you get to the two numbers there, Raise your hand. You're good. Okay, Trey. Uh, but they're not positive, are they? No. What are they? Because 11 is negative. They both have to be negative, right? Yeah. So in this case right here, he drilled it. Now you could have went 14 and 2. That doesn't get to 11. You could have went, <laughs> that's it. 7 and 4 would be the next choice, right? Or 28 1, which if you're testing 28 1 right there, you know that's not going to get to 11. So, and then you get 7 and 4. Okay, that gets to 11. How do I get to negative 11? Well, they both have to be negative. So we get W minus 7, W minus 4, and there's your solution. Okay, let's get a little bit harder. I'm going to write this now, and then I'm going to write a little note underneath this one, just so you guys can see it. Because there's a little trick when it comes to this. I'm going to write a little bullet point. If C is negative, one of the numbers has to be negative and the other has to be positive. So if C is ever negative, one of the numbers has to be negative and the other has to be positive. If C is ever negative, like it is in this example up here, one of the numbers has to be negative and the other one has to be positive. So let's go through and we solve this. If you, once again, we can get back to labeling it if you want. A, B, C. B is always next to X. A is always next to X squared. C is always alone. So we're going to write C off to the side. I need two numbers that multiply together to be negative 15 and add together to be 2. So, um, Travis, give me two numbers that multiply together to be 15. Okay, is there a way that those can get to positive 2? Yeah. Okay, which one's negative though? Yeah, three. Why not the 5? Because then it'd be negative. And the 5 would be negative 
Good. So look at that. That drill right there. We know five and three can get to two. Now you just have to think. Sometimes I've seen people do this, where they this is a testing area over here, right? I've seen people write it twice, and then try to figure out. Okay, negative five plus three is negative two. No, so the negative must be there. So there's your answer, right? Because it's a testing area. Test out as many answers as you want. So we're gonna have x plus five and x minus three as your solution. All right. Here you go. You guys are going to try this one on your own. Actually, I'll do this one and I'm going to give the last one to you guys on your own. So first thing is C is negative. So one has to be positive, one has to be negative. We're going to write C off to the side. I need two numbers that multiply together to be 48, negative 48, and add together to be 13. Maddie, give me two numbers that multiply together to be 48. Six and eight. Can that get to 13? Nope. They add them together, they have 14. If they're both negative, one has to be positive, one has to be negative. You're either looking at two or negative two, right? Um, 12 and what? 12 and four. Can those get to 13? No. 12 minus four is eight. Four minus 12 would be negative eight. So nope. Okay, so 16 and 3 says, yeah, it's going to be a negative 3. So 16 times a negative 3 is negative 48. 16 minus 3 is 13. Does that work? Now I know he got to it kind of quick. Think about it. You guys could have tested a lot there, right? There's a lot of things that go into 48. You could have went 24 and 2. You could have went 48 and 1. You could have went, I guess that's it. So there would be your answer. So you'd have y, not x, y plus 16, y minus 3, and there's your solution. Good. All right, one last one. You guys ready? And I'm going to give r squared. Does it matter what variable it is? No. Minus 2r. Minus 24. Go for it. They'd already got it. Or she threw a pencil down in anger. One of two things should probably happen. Said are you cold? Oh, it'd be great if we got rid of mass, wouldn't it? Sid, how happy would you be? I would do a dance. Places they wouldn't have the same rules. Wait, wasn't it just how the two do and I'll take one for me? Some point. Same. All right. Um, Dan, you ready? Dan, tell me two numbers that multiply together to be tw negative 24. Four Holy crap. I would have put $20 on it. That he would have either. Oh, he cheated off of Maddie. What? Did you? Okay, <laughs> is he right? Yeah. Yep. So, our racial profile, and that makes sense. 
R minus 6 and R plus 4. So there's your solution. Now there is one you're going to see on your homework today and there will be some of you guys that get it. So I'm actually going to show you. Well, okay, so this is all we're going to be doing today. Tomorrow we're going to learn how to solve them. But today all we're worried about is just factoring them. There is one on your homework today and they, we, there will be a point where some of you guys will see it. Some of you guys will, some of you guys won't. I'm just going to do it up here in this corner. So right here. It looks like this. X squared minus 5x minus 6. Tell me the two numbers. Well, that doesn't multiply to the, together to be 6. Tell me the two numbers. Raise your hand if you think you got the two numbers. What are they, Preston? Nope. Negative 6 and 1. Negative 6 and 1. This is the one that gets more people than anything else because of that reason. We think that, we think, well, 2 and 3 add up to be 5. Okay, they're both negative, right? And then you go into your homework and you go x minus 2, x minus 3, but that's wrong because negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6. Remember, if c is ever negative, one has to be positive, one has to be negative, so that's wrong. So the answer would be negative 6 and 1. So x minus 6, x plus 1 would be your answer. That one's a tricky bugger. Not for trade, very much. Okay, um, what time do we get out of here? Okay, five problems coming at you. It's there.